friend welcome to god undiluted on this page the mandate is to speak the word of god and edit it and cut for this our generation as we dissect the word together as we learn powered by the holy spirit listen we grow so it is my prayer that as you listen to this message it stirs you up and that you will not be the same again after listening to this message so without further ado let's just pray Father, thank you for this opportunity to share your word with your children. I thank you so much for how you are so loving, how you are so kind. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for speaking to us through your Bible, oh God. And it is my prayer, Lord, that as we study it, as we get into it, as we just sit at your feet, Lord, that we understand it better that you reveal jesus to us through your word it is my prayer oh god that i decrease as you alone increase holy spirit take charge be the teacher you are the promised teacher that jesus spoke of so we invite you into your place to teach use me as your vessel and may jesus alone be glorified amen 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 we pray it and we seal it in the name of jesus friends today's message (laughs) i don't even know what to say but i'm just going to go straight into it so i am now in the book of ezekiel yay (laughs) in my study of the old testament listen the books of um jeremiah the books of isaiah those have been tough going but your girl has been learning and i'm just so thankful for god's love and and just his patience and his his holy spirit that teaches us and reveals jesus in every book listen jesus is not just in the new testament he's in the old testament too and today i want to share with you a learning that i'm excited about that i am that i'm really praying that you know what i deliver it as it was this morning as i was reflecting and meditating on this word because it is a really powerful one so we're gonna read together so let's read from ezekiel chapter three okay so i'm gonna read the bible says and he said to me son of man eat what is before you eat this scroll then go and speak to the people of israel I want to start there, my friends, before I even read the rest of this chapter. I want to share with you this important information, this important learning that the Lord shared with me as I was reading this. Let's read it again. The Bible says, and he said to me, this was Ezekiel and who was speaking to him, right? Is the spirit of God, right? So let me read again. The Bible says, and he said to me, son of man, Eat what is before you. Eat the scroll. Then go and speak to the people of Israel. Why am I emphasizing this message? I want you to think about the concept of eating, right? Because it's been mentioned in this one verse twice. Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat the scroll. So not only was Ezekiel, you know, prompted to eat, but he was directed to what he should eat. And when you think about it from a human level, when someone says, eat what is before you, what automatically comes to our mind is food. What automatically comes to our mind is something that can be eaten by a human being. And what does food do, my friends? Food nourishes the body. We become what we eat, right? And actually, let me correct that. Not all food nourishes the body, but we know that food has an impact on the body. Stay with me. So we know that if I was eating good food, if I was feasting on, you know, fast food or whatever, my body will tell a story. My skin, especially us ladies, our skin would tell a story. If water and you do not have a relationship, (laughs) right? But if you have a relationship with only the sweet stuff, your skin will, will tell part of that story. You know, or your gut, your stomach, you know, those love handles, they will tell a story. So food has influence on the body right? And so let's read it again. The word says, and he said to me, son of man, eat, eat what is before you, right? And there was a direction to what he's supposed to eat. Eat the scroll. My friends, I I, I can't even begin to describe to you how much I was overwhelmed this morning from just learning from that one little statement, eat the scroll. And I've written some of these things down. When you think about it, the scroll represents the word of God. Ezekiel was about to be sent by God. You know, he had been called to be a prophet, a a mouthpiece for God. And the first mandate for for him was to eat. 
But what was clear was what he was to eat was not that which nourishes the body, but that which nourishes the spirit man. Eat the scroll. So my friends, it is important for us to recognize that what we eat spiritually will determine the nourishment, will determine, will have an impact on the size, on the strength, on the health of your spirit, right? If you're not eating the scroll, if Ezekiel had not eaten of the scroll, he had no message to share. Any message that would have flown from his mouth would have been man-made, right? He would have been snacking on, you know, fast food. And I'm not going to use their names because I don't want this video to be censored because this is a very important message. But he had to eat of the scroll. My friends, the first message is, and the first question for you is, are you eating the word? Are you eating the word of the Lord? I want you to think of this as eating. The Bible doesn't say Isaiah, you know, smell the food. I want you to smell the scroll. I want you to kind of be where the scroll is. It's saying eat. It means it, get, it gets in the inside of you, my friends. What we eat get in the inside of us is different to you going somewhere where something is being cooked and smelling it or imagine what it might be like eating it. It's another thing when you actually absorb it, when you actually allow yourself to eat of it, chew of it, process it, and then it becomes a nourishment or <laughs> a not so nourishing thing to your body. So the first, first, first key message for you, my friends, is this, eat the word. Imagine what would happen to the quality of the messages we would receive in our churches if men and women of God who speak every Sunday truly eat the word, right? To really eat the word because you become what you eat. The problem here, my friends, is many of us, you know, want other people to eat what we're not eating, Right? We just want to be the person, you know, who takes the food out into the congregation. We want to be the waiter who, you know, the, the chef has prepared the food and we just take the food and we want to, you know, sh give it to the tables, give it to other people eating and yet we're not eating. You know, I have a thing where sometimes when I go to a restaurant I've never been before, I always say to the waiters things like, you know, what would you recommend of the menu? What would you recommend, right? Because I am hoping and trusting that they have eaten what is being offered in their place where they are waiting the food, <laughs> right? And I'm sure many of you would relate to this. And I've not yet had one of them who says, oh, don't eat that. That's not very nice, right? And I'm sure not every waiter has eaten what is on the menu. So it is important if you're a man or woman of God to recognize that people look up to you. People look up to you and hope and trust that the word which you are asking them or, or, or prompting them to eat, you're eating it yourself. But we're living in a time, my friends, where a lot of people are no longer eating the word. They're not eating what they want other people to eat. They're giving an illusion of someone who eats of the word. You know, when you're a parent and you're feeding your child, you know, um, I remember when I was younger. And one of my, 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 my mom's sisters or whatever, I, let me just give you the image, right? Cause I don't want to, I, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, butcher the, the memory, but let me explain it to you what I mean. Where parents do this thing where they pretend to be eating the same thing that a child is eating so that the child eats it. The child thinks, ah, mommy ate it, daddy ate it. So therefore let me eat it. We have many pastors, many leaders, many influencers, many people who do that same thing. Yet my friends, the real truth, the real <laughs> the real order of things when you read in the book of Ezekiel, when Ezekiel was called, the order was this. Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat what is before you. Eat the scroll. Then go. Then go and speak to the people. You cannot be speaking to the people if you've not eaten the word that you want the people to hear you speak. You understand? Let me keep going down. Let me keep going down with this, right? The Bible, when you think about it, my friends, when you think about the power in the Bible, the, <laughs> let me just read some of these things that I've written down. This here is the very breath of God. You know, when you read the whole Bible, I'm so grateful that God, you know, prompted me to start this journey and I obeyed to read this cover, this Bible cover to cover Genesis to, to, to revelations. I'm not yet nearly fully there. I'm done with the old test with the, with the new Testament for now, but in terms of the old Testament, you know, I'm grateful that even though when it has been hard going, I've persevered because now I'm learning that when you really read these books, there is no way human beings, human people would write these books and there not be a spirit of God somewhere in it. 
Many people argue things like, oh, but the Bible has been written by people. Yes, it was. Yes, it's people who put these things together. But the knowledge, the content, the wisdom, the revelation in this word is beyond a human being. That's why you can have a theologian who's not a Christian, who's read this thing cover to cover from a critical appraisal point of view, right? My, my doctoral research is coming out there, right? From a critical point of view, right? They have read the word. They have studied the word, but they don't know the word, right? You get to know the word when you eat it. You get to know the word when your spirit man eats it. Not when you read it from a fleshy point of view, right? From a knowledge point of view. The word of God, my friends, it is not about an acquisition of knowledge. It is not about that. It is not a book that you go to get knowledge. It is not a book that you go to just know. But when you read the word of God, when you eat of the word of God, your life will never be the same again. Let me tell you what happened to Ezekiel when he ate of the scroll. If you keep reading, you will see that he ate of the scroll. And we're going to just fast forward to verse 15. The Bible says, I came to the exiles who lived at Tel Aviv near the Keba River. And there, where they were living, I sat among them for seven days, deeply distressed. Let me tell you something. So now Ezekiel has eaten of the scroll. He's been sent by God. And we're going to rewind back to the middle chapters. But I want to, I want to follow what the Spirit of God is, is telling me. So I, I, I'll start with that point first, right? He was deeply distressed. He went to the people that he was supposed to speak to. For seven days, he was silent. And the Bible tells us that he was deeply distressed. If you fast forward to the book of Revelation, you will see a man called John who also was asked to eat of the word. And after eating it, well, during the process of eating it, it tasted sweet. But after eating it, his stomach got upset. He had an upset stomach. He couldn't hold that word in, right? My friends, when you eat of the word, you start to develop this holy, righteous anger and frustration that you can never, ever, ever explain. What I mean by that is this, you will start to get to a place where, because you know your authority now in God, whenever there is weakness, uh, 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 evil, whenever the enemy is trying to, to, to frustrate people, the word in you, the word that you've eaten gets frustrated, gets angry, gets distressed. When you see people look warm, when you see people that are perishing, listen, the distress in you rises so much, not from a place of condemn condemnation or condemning them, not from a place of judging them, but from a place of recognizing that, listen, my heart is grieved because if you do not hear of this word, if you do not eat of this word, if you do not, you are perishing. We have many leaders, my friends, many churches that are sending people to hell. Full churches, three, four services with 20,000 plus people every single Sunday. Yet those leaders are sending people to hell because what has happened is they've stopped eating of the word. They've stopped feeling distressed by sin. They have stopped because they're not eating of the word. And as a result, what now leads them is the applause of many. You know, when someone preaches a word and their first thought is, well, people were not clapping. People were not clapping. Does that mean that was a bad message? People were clapping. That means it's a good message. People are giving. So that means it's a good message. Where now, what is the feeling that person is not the word, is not the word that they've eaten, but the applause of people. Leader, if you're not eating the word, there's going to be space. You're going to have an empty stomach and an empty stomach always gets fed. Right? But the thing is, what feeds it, right? What feeds it? Because if we were all my friends in some desert somewhere, right? Right now, set here with food in our, in our fridges, none of us, none of us would eat a dog. <laughs> oh, sounds awful. <laughs> I would, right? But the reality of the matter is, if you were on a desert island, abandoned, and you're there for 40 days, you don't know what you will eat. You don't know what you will eat. But you will eat something because that is your survival instinct as a human being. And if that happens, my friends, in the body, what more the spirit? What more your spirit, man? If you're not eating, you are empty in your spiritual stomach and you are prompted to eat something else because your, your inner person needs to eat. So if you're not feeding the spirit, man, and you're empty, your soul will be bigger. 
your soul, your flesh <laughs> will, 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 will do the feeding. Let me keep reading. So let's go back, right? Let's go back to verse three. So at this point, we know that in verse one and two, the Bible says that son of man, eat what is before you, eat the scroll, then go and speak to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat. Then he said to me, son of man, eat the scroll I'm giving you and fill your stomach with it. Can you see this? In verse two, Ezekiel had eaten of the scroll, yet the message keeps coming. Son of man, eat of the scroll. I wonder whether that meant that, you know what, Ezekiel had eaten some of the scroll, but not all of the scroll. Right. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this point. Because I want you to think of what a scroll represents. You know, I had a little picture moment and I've just put it on the on the on the screen there just so that to make you laugh. Right. Of me, like trying to get my mouth into my Bible or well, get the, my Bible into my mouth. Listen, why would you want to eat paper? If you think about it. <laughs> right. But I want to give you the image of this. Eating the scroll is not easy. Right. Eating the scroll is not going to be palatable. Life is not always going to make it easy for you to read the Bible. Life is not always going to make it easy for you to eat the scroll. It is not fast food. It is not chocolate. It is not sweet. It's not always sweet. All right. The fullness of the word of God, the fullness of the scroll, because the the, 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 uh, um, the, the angel of the Lord, you know, the, the spirit of God, whatever, whatever in this particular situation, whichever you want to look at it. Ezekiel was being asked to eat of the scroll. It didn't say parts of the scroll, most of the scroll, 90% of the scroll. It said, eat the scroll. My friends, if we like 90% of the Bible, or if we preach 90% of the Bible and miss the, the, the 10%, it's still not the full gospel. It is not. It becomes false. The hardest thing, my friends, is not telling right from wrong. It is telling right from what is almost right. And that is the time we're living in now, my friends, where anyone can have a platform. I just had to set up my camera and everything. And you know what? I'm speaking to you. And I have the potential to, you know, speak to thousands, millions even, just by the power of social media. That's how accessible it is now to speak to millions in seconds. Anyone can speak. And you know what? Things will sound good, but not everything that sounds good is of God, my friends. Learn to recognize what sounds good, what gets people to do the whole, ooh. but yet it has no substance. Zilch. Because the speaker has not eaten of the scroll. You see, they've not eaten of the scroll, but they have learned how to appease the crowds, how to pull the crowds right? Good lighting, good algorithms, good whatever can get someone thousands and thousands of views, right? The things that please the eye, right? Someone might just be put off from this video by my outfit. Somebody might be drawn to this video by my outfit. That's how shallow our society has become, my friends. Let's keep reading. So it says, then he said to me, son of man, eat the scroll I'm giving you and fill your stomach with it. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, eat until you are full. Eat until there is surplus. You can never have enough of it. You ate yesterday, well done. Eat today again. All right? Fill your stomach. Don't give the enemy a chance to contaminate your mind because you're selective with what you read of the Bible. You have a problem with one area, you just read all about that area. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with specific studies about certain things. I was a Christian for 30, well, let me not count when I was like a baby. <laughs> I was a Christian, let's just think maybe from the age of maybe 10, when I started to read the Bible. I was from like, like 20 years then, from 10 to 30, or even like 32, yeah, where I had never read half of this Bible. But I used to read the Bible. Do you see what I mean? What would happen is I would just pick a thing that is in line with what I liked, what I wanted. You see? 
but I never went to things that I thought were well, I mean, who reads the book of Jeremiah fully? I like the, 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 the bit that says Jeremiah 29, 11. That is as much of Jeremiah as I liked. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you. We all like those verses. Do you know the assignment that Jeremiah was called to? When we sing and, and love the call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things. Do you know what it, what, what it was like? Really? Jeremiah got to a point where he said, God, I curse the day that I was born kill me <laughs> sorry i kind of borrowed from my nigerian friends there <laughs> right jeremiah got to that level do you know what god said to ezekiel god said to him yeah you know what go in this place you're going to be there for 139 days and all that kind of jazz and while you're there what you're going to eat you're going to cook it with your excrement i was like god Ooh. you see this is in the bible this is in the bible people who are cold and yet we all want to be cold do we know what it means to be called? <laughs> Do we know? And then Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel was like, please, God, excrement. No, God, I, that, this level of defilement. And then God kind of was like, okay, okay, fair, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Not human excrement. Let's, let's, you know, maybe animals, <laughs> right? I'm sharing these things with you, my friends, not to say that I've attained it all, but to say now, I say, when I say glory belongs to Jesus, when, the, when, we're, when we're as Christians now can say, you know what, pride is not our portion. We want to be humble and give glory to Jesus. It is because you start to learn that, you know what, even for me to be speaking to you right now and learning these things, it is Jesus. I cannot claim credit. It is Jesus. But what you have to be prepared to do is to sit at his feet and eat of the word. Eat the scroll. And my friends, when you think about it, how beautiful is this? That in John chapter 1, Jesus describes himself as the word. He is the word. He says it himself. Right? Shall we go to it? So, in John chapter 1. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. <laughs> right? This is what it says. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Hmm. How beautiful is that? So when you're eating of the scroll, my friends, you are eating Jesus. That's why I'm telling you that reading the Old and the New Testament, you see the story so differently. It opens you up to the master plan of God. It opens you up to the splendor of God. It opens you up to the goodness of God. It opens you to the heart of God in full. Right? We're called to eat of the scroll that is Jesus. As you partake of this word, you are partaking of Jesus. All right? If we keep going, you'll see that in John chapter 6. All right? In verse 48. The Bible says this. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. Well, actually it started off by saying, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. I'm so thankful for you, God. Everything makes sense. Everything makes sense when you read it and you see him and the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom. Not my own, but his. So I pray, my friends, the message is not complete, but I'm just going at it in the order that the Holy Spirit is giving me. And at this moment, I just want to say, I pray, my friends, that you desire to eat Jesus. You start to look at your Bible and think, wow, this is Jesus. You start to look at your Bible and say, this is how I eat of Jesus. This is how my spirit man eats of Jesus. This is how my spirit man will become more and more like Jesus. What I eat, I become. When in my flesh, I eat of sweets. I eat of, co I drink of Coca-Cola. Sorry, I don't want to mention brands. I, all of those different things, right? If I eat of them, yes, I become them. My gut is going to tell that. So Lord, I want to eat of Jesus. 
I want to eat of Jesus. I want my spirit man to eat of Jesus. And as I eat of Jesus, listen, I'm going to be transformed into the image of Jesus. I'm going to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus. That's how you become transformed. You don't become transformed by someone laying hands on you. You don't become transformed by going on a prayer line. You don't become transformed in, by, 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 by all these different things that we think we need. We become transformed by eating of Jesus. Because when you eat of him, your spirit man grows. Your spirit man transforms. Your spirit man grows. Right? Yes, all these other things are important. I'm not saying don't, you know, be prayed for. I'm not saying don't pray with people. I'm not saying don't do all of that stuff. But I'm saying eat. 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 Eat the word. Eat of Jesus. And see how you will be transformed. Your spirit man will be transformed into the image of Jesus. Let's keep going. You know, one of the diseases that we have in our society, you know, this, this image that um, the, the, the Lord gave me as I was just reflecting on this before coming on was, you know, an, an image of the uh, mother, mother bird, <laughs> mother bird, <laughs> you know, bear with me. I, I, I'm very bilingual, very much British, very much uh, Zimbabwean too. So, you know, it, it, it's all in there. <laughs> Listen. I want you to have this image that the Lord gave me as I was coming on. It's like, you know, an eagle. Like, let's use an eagle. Instead of saying bird, bird, bird. <laughs> let's use eagle. When you think of an eagle, which is a bird, but let's, you know, eagle is easy. It's easy on my tongue to say. Eagle, yeah? When it has babies, yes, what will happen is, I'm, you know, please, any geologist, biologist, don't come at me with this. I'm just saying ego because it's easy on my tongue, but I want you to think of it as a bird, 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 fly, bird, <laughs> any bird, right? They build a nest, right? Those, those flying animals, birds, they build a nest when they're about to have their young and they put their young, their, their eggs in there. And once these little eggs have hatched, what this mother bird or ego right does they go off there they hunt for food and you know whether it's like worms whether it's like fish whatever it is that they get right and what they do is they put it in their mouth and then off they get back to their little nests and their little birdies are kind of chirping away their little babies and then they put the food from their own mouth into the mouth of the little birdies right and what the lord was saying to me as i was coming on was like that is the disease of the 21st century, our modern day churches, where we have a situation where many, many Christians, including leaders, what is happening is people want someone else, all right, to have gone and collected the food, not only collect the food, but you know what, mash it up for them and then just deposit it into their mouths. So they didn't do the, any of the looking after for the food and also they don't have to chew anything because somebody has done the chewing if your source my friend of the word is 90 percent what you hear on sunday or tiktok or youtube even from me the order is wrong the order is wrong no book no devotion no man of god no prophet whatever you want to call them should ever replace you going into the word and eating the scroll, even if you're not a teacher, a preacher, a leader, or whatever. Because listen, before these callings, before these titles, God sees us as his children. God didn't send his only begotten son, Jesus, right? As a priest, as a prophet. He didn't say, go into this world and be a prophet. The Bible doesn't say, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten prophet. He sent his only begotten preacher. He sent his only begotten teacher. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, for God so loved his only begotten son that he, you know, for God so loved, you know, the world that he sent his only begotten son. Right? That's what he says. Let me, let me say that again. The Bible does not say, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten prophet. He sent his only begotten teacher. He sent his only begotten pastor. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Which means, my friends, that God calls us to sonship. It is not prophet. It is not teacher. It is not pastor that God calls you to. Does that make sense? He may have put the gifts in you to be prophetic, to be a teacher, you know, all of these things. Right? But the first calling is into sonship. And many of us have had that order wrong. 
I didn't know that God had given me a calling and a gifting to teach the word. I didn't know. It's only people on TikTok who are like, you know, if you've got a Bible study, I'm like, ah, me, Bible study, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Right? It started from a place of me becoming a son. I don't like it when I have to cry because I feel like, you know, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. The teaching, I only realized that I had been given a gift to teach people, right? After I became a son. So my friends, never let it be that. You're focusing so much on God, use me, God, use me, God, I want power, God, I want power to be a prophet, to be a teacher, a ministry, and miss that. Those are things that flow from places of sonship. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, right? And we now have the same inheritance of sonship. Jesus was indeed prophetic. Jesus was indeed a teacher. Jesus was indeed all of those things. If you read the book of John, you'll see that Jesus never said to himself, to anyone, I'm a teacher. It was people who said to him when they heard him speak, people said, Rabbi, you know, such and such and such and such and such. They were asking questions. But Jesus never said, listen, I'm here to be your rabbi. I'm here to be your teacher. I'm here to be your prophet. He never did that. Right? I don't want to labor this point. But it is my desire, my friends, whether you're a leader, whether whatever you may have been, to recognize that you've been called to your sonship position. And I ask you that as you read this word, you start to realize that it is an eating of the son that is Jesus, that you will also be transformed into the likeness of the son that is Jesus. Let me move on. All right. We need to grow out of the baby bird syndrome, my friends. We need to grow out of that. Grow out of it. It is very possible. If this girl that you are hearing speaking, this big girl, <laughs> right? I still feel like I'm 18. If this big girl who's 35, yeah, 35. I was going to say 34, 35, <laughs> right? Can be here and you can be listening to the sound of her voice. And she's telling you that, listen, she's reading these books in the Bible and learning all of these things. There's nothing unique about her. She just grew to a place where she said, I want to meet with you, Jesus. I want to know you because my life right now as it is without you is, is a mess. I have everything the world would want. The, the cars, the house, the, the, the amazing, you know, holiday lifestyle I used to be engaging. I can still do those things, but listen, I don't even desire them as much. Because as I eat of him, I found the greater thing. Let me keep going. All right. So. The word has power. You know why it's so important to eat of Jesus? Many people want the power, but they don't know that the source is the word. You see? And the churches are full of people who celebrate, who, who shout, who are hollering, <laughs> like my American friends would say. But people go back to their homes and life is very much the same. Because there's only one place where the Bible says there's power. And I'm going to read that. So if we go to Hebrews chapter 4. Okay, Hebrews, come on, <laughs> right, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, yeah, the, the Bible says, for the word of God is active, well, let me not get ahead of myself, let me read it properly, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in creation is hidden from God's sight. So, my friends, can you hear that? The power that is in the word? Not only is it alive, it is alive. It is a live sword, right? It is alive and active. So if you want an active ministry, if you want an active life, if you want a life-filled ministry, if you want a life-filled life, it's in the word. It's in the word. That's what it is. If you eat of the word, the power, the life, the activeness is guaranteed. 
All right? Sharper than any double-edged sword. Penetrating even to the dividing soul, spirit, joints, and marrow. Judging thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It's like a... a, a, a um, I was going to say stethoscope. No. <laughs> what is the thing that can help you to see inside? MRI scan, all that kind of stuff. You get the point, right? The power is in the word, my friends. That is where it is in. Yes? The sword of the spirit. Again, if you go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse, let's go to it. Ephesians. Mm-hmm. Corinthians, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, yeah, right, as we're learning about the full armor of God, right, it ends in verse 17 saying, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. My friends, this is the power. Imagine, I want you to imagine, you know. Old English Victorian times, the swords, you know, those old films where, you know, <laughs> or even maybe even the, 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 the Chinese ones, you see that all the time, the power of the sword, not even a gun or anything, the sword killing, you know, enemies left, right and center, right? What am I trying to say, my friends? Your power is in the word. You want to pray? You want to pray impactful, powerful prayers? Get into the word. Not only will the word help you to know what to pray for, right? So that you don't pray amiss. But the word will become that power. I'm, I'm hearing the word in my spirit, do not miss power. I hope I'm using it appropriately in this, right? You're gaining power, right? Because you are giving God back his son, right? Because everything glorifies Jesus, my friends. And when I say to God, God, there is your son. It is written, it is written and I'm presenting the word and the word of God tells me that the word was there in the beginning and the word was God. And I know that that's referring to Jesus. Then it means I'm giving back to God, his son. Wow. I hope you catch that revelation, my friends. So pray the scriptures, the power that is in that. But it's not just a situation where, you know what, you take a scripture and then you're praying it and, and yet you don't have a relationship with the son. Makes no sense, does it? I can take my dad's passport, all right? And I can go somewhere where only his children can, you know, can access something, all right? But the reality of the matter is someone else takes my dad's passport, goes where only his children need to have an inheritance, you know? They're going to be asked things that they're not going to be able to answer, all right? Because they're not in relationship with my father right so we need to be careful my friends to recognize that it's not just a mere plonking of the scriptures the question is are you in relationship with who is the scripture i pray that we become truly saved and what i mean by that is becoming people who say you know what i'm no longer a slave to sin because i'm now alive in jesus and because i'm in jesus I'm inside of Jesus. I'm in him. I can speak the scripture and present the scripture. And the father sees his son in that. Hmm. May God help us, my friends. May God help us. I pray that this word inspires you to eat of the word. Eat the scroll. And one last point I want to mention, especially for the leaders, is this. When you go back to Ezekiel's experience, I want you to notice another thing. All right. What was happening? Oh, I'm still in Ephesians. Let's go back to Ezekiel. All right. Okay. So Ezekiel, we're here. Bear with. I'm getting there. Right. Here we are. When you go back to Ezekiel and you continue in chapter 3, you will see this in chapter 16. At the end of the seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to a wicked person, 
you will surely die. And you do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them from their evil ways in order to save their lives. That wicked person will die for their sin and I will hold you accountable for their blood. You hear that? Yes. You who wants to have a big ministry? Are you hearing this? Yeah. But if you do warn the wicked person and they do not turn from their wickedness or from their evil ways, they will die for their sin. But you will be saved yourself. All right. Again, when a righteous person turns from their righteousness and does evil and I put a stumbling block before them, they will die. Since you did not warn them, they will die for their sin. The righteous things that that person did will not be remembered and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the righteous person not to sin and they do not sin, they will surely live because they took warning and you will have saved yourself. The Bible continues, the hand of the Lord was on me and he said to me, get up and go to the plain and there I will speak to you. So I got up, got to the plain and the glory of the Lord was standing there like the glory I had seen by the Keba river and I fell face down. The spirit of the Lord, then the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. He spoke to me and said, go, shut yourself inside your house and you son of man, they will tie with ropes. You will be bound so that you cannot go out among the people. I will make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth and you will be silent and unable to rebuke them for their rebellious people. But when I speak to you, I will open your mouth and you shall say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Whoever will listen, let them listen. And whoever will refuse, let them refuse for their rebellious people. What am I trying to say to you, leader, influencer? I hope you change that to impactor for the kingdom, (laughs) right? When you choose to press record, when you choose to speak, open up that church, know this, you're accountable. You're accountable for the messages that you preach. You're accountable for the people that are set in your church. You're accountable for them spiritually. I'm not talking some distorted spiritual father, mother business here. No, I'm talking your accountability is because people listen. People are listening to you. And you have such a premium position in their lives spiritually because what you hear, you become, right? You become what you hear. Have you ever seen that? You know, people, when you go through a period where you listen to a certain preacher, you start to sometimes speak like them. I thank God that when I started this journey, he said to me, you're not going to learn through devotionals. You're not going to learn through listening to any man or woman of God. You're going to learn through hearing the spirit of God. We're going to train those spiritual ears and eyes because now I can see it. I can see the importance of that because we absorb our environment, my friends. So when you've been called and you have a platform and people start to follow you, that one person, that two persons, that church, and you are someone who's not eating of the word and you start to be led by what you think people want to hear, like a two Timothy type preacher, where you are now tickling people's ears. You are afraid to have certain specific opinions about things that are in the media, things that are affecting our world right now because you want to keep your church. My friend, know this. God is saying to us who have said yes to speaking his word, you will be held accountable. You will be held accountable for the things that you say and the direction your words lead people. Better not to speak than to speak for influence. I'm also recording this for me. (laughs) Please God, can we finish it now? I'm recording this for me so that should the day ever come where the enemy has gotten to my head because he will try for anyone who said yes to speaking the enemy will try to get to your head he will try to bring that pride it is a daily consistent attack the enemy will try but if you're not eating of the word and there's space in your belly he will have room to feel it so i'm recording this for me as well to say god bring me back to this video should i ever get to a place where how i speak is dependent on the society and on being politically correct. Help me, Lord, not to be in a space where my yes or my no starts to be like, it depends. May it never be an it it depends. And friends, Mm. if you ever hear me get to that, I ask that you email me message me and 
say? Do you remember what you said on this day, on this video? Repent, my sister. And listen, I will, I will, I will, I will listen. Because it's a sad sight when you see what is happening in this world, in the church. And it is my prayer that you become my community, my friends. Especially at the stage when we are in our infancy, you become also my keepers. <laughs> and help me when I need that help. Right? So we're going to finish this here today. And um, I pray that the word has blessed you. I pray that if you had been quashiokered when it comes to the word, <laughs> you go back to eating. Go back to eating. We don't want quashioka spirits. <laughs> right? And if you've been listening to the sound of my voice, you are new here. You've never given your life to Christ or maybe you did, but you didn't. <laughs> What I mean by that is maybe you just said, oh yeah, I believe Jesus with my mouth, but you're still living in sin. My sister, my brother, let's start again with God. Yeah? So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for you are good. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you gave your only begotten son to invite us into sonship, not into titles, not into offices. Those things are amazing. Those things are important for your body. But that's not what you called us to. You bring us those things and you cause us to operate in those things. But what you desire from us is sonship, fellowship. Lord, right now I confess with my mouth. So if you are listening and you've not done this prayer before, please follow after me. I confess with my mouth that I was a sinner. I was living a life that was not honorable to God. I was living a life that was idolizing myself, making myself God. But today, Lord, I repent. And I now know what the true meaning of the word repentance is. Repentance is turning away from my sin. Jesus came on this earth. He died for me. He carried my sin on that cross so that I can be no longer a slave to sin. So from today onwards, I give my life to you, Lord Jesus. I come into the marvelous light of Christ. Out of darkness into the marvelous light of Christ. And I ask, oh Lord... That Lord Jesus, as I've come into you, that you help me to start this walk with you. I'm no longer a slave to sin because you've saved me. I understand that sin separates me from the Father. God hates sin and I know that. But through his amazing grace, he gave me Jesus. So Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. I say yes to you, Lord Jesus. And from today onwards, I ask that you give me an appetite for righteousness, an appetite to become more like you as I walk in your righteousness, powered only by the Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit right now to come and cleanse my house, to come and cleanse me so that I may be a house that the Spirit of God, who's dwelling in, grows bigger and bigger spiritually than my flesh being bigger as, as it currently is. Help me, Holy Spirit. Live in me. Change me. Transform me. And may Jesus alone be glorified. Friends, if you've prayed this prayer, please do email me. I would love to support you and disciple you to learn how do you eat of this word? How do you eat of the scroll? How do you talk to this Jesus? How do you do the Christian thing? <laughs> All right? In... The next few months, God has opened an opportunity for me to, well, not necessarily God has opened an opportunity. Let me say that I've decided to walk in the obedience uh, um, of God and, and, and make more time. So, yeah, make more time to, to disciple people. So come January, I'll be doing some, um, so what it means to be Christian type uh, live videos, just teaching people, just encouraging people. You'll be welcome to join them. They will be on different platforms here, TikTok, you know, all of those kind of things. So email me if you are a new believer and need help um, just with all the things, you know, Christian. And I will and I will definitely endeavor to add you to that list and tell you closer to the time when it's happening. And also for those in the UK, friends, I am hosting a prayer event in London 
yes in london listen i don't even live in london but i felt god was saying to me london right so we move we move so the 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 venue has been paid for glory be to god for that and the event is going to be a ticketed event not for profit not for profit but so that some of the event costs um, are manageable because I want you guys to have a good time. There's going to be lovely food. Listen, it's going to be class. It's going to be lovely. You know, we're going to look nice as well as we worship God, as we pray and consecrate ourselves. The scripture for the event is Joshua chapter three, verse five, which says, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. I will do great and amazing things among you. So I really believe that, you know what, when we set ourselves apart, consecration means being set apart. When we set ourselves apart for God, listen, he does amazing things among us. So I'm so excited. I'm just so humble that God is doing this with us, guys. So please, please, please do grab a ticket. It will mean so much to me. Just your support, your encouragement as we keep going, going, going. So invite a friend, you know, just, just, I was going to say patronize me <laughs> with your buying of the tickets. Guys, event bright, prayer, praise, and high tea. I've also put a link to the event bright in the description. So I'm going to go now. I feel like I've kept you long enough. So uh, may God bless you and enlarge your territories. And I look forward to speaking with you soon.